All right, let's assemble this snowman. We have a carrot nose, we have two twig arms, and we've got a little scarf. So one thing to think about when you're thinking about this, we're gonna start with the carrot and we're gonna place it and it's gonna kind of center everything because that's just how faces and bodies work. So think about where you want the center to be. Whatever is uh, sort of right below the nose is gonna get a lot of um, visual space. So do you wanna move it over a little bit so that when we put on the scarf and this, uh, the end of the scarf hangs down, that it's hanging into this area here um, so that um, we aren't kind of covering up our main thing. So if you put it right over here, um, the scarf is going to, you know, depending on where you place it, it's, it's going to change things. So just spend a little time and maybe even put the scarf on and think about how it's hanging and how you like what your design is and what you want to show where. I like this curly bit coming up right beside the nose. I think that looks really cozy, although having it farther away also works. But I'm going to put my nose slightly off center, not right above this with the end, but kind of off to the side. And then when we've got our arms on, the arms will um, kind of come down into the spaces left by what we've done or what I've done. I don't know what you're doing with yours. All right, so we are not going to be placing this carrot so that it's standing straight up. If we do that, we're not going to be able to see it very much from the front. So we're actually going to put it on so that it's mostly sideways. Maybe it's going to come up at like a 45 degree angle or so, but that's really um, sort of the most we want. And so to do that, we're going to be attaching it in a C shape. So we're going to come up at the, side, at the top here, come around the sides and then down through the bottom. And that's just going to help us anchor that whole plump I-cord bottom on. I want to attach it right up next to the brim with basically all gnome world kind of things, all Grimblewood things. We want the nose right up next to the brim so that when it droops down that it kind of covers what would be the eyes and it just makes sense kind of visually to our brains about why the eyes are missing. So we don't want to leave a lot of space. So we are going to hold it on and then we're going to snag a little bit of the gnome snow fabric and then snag a little bit of the carrot. When you're grabbing, try to grab from the underside of the curve of the carrot. So rather than grabbing sort of from up here, if I can grab down here sort of on the bottom of that curve, then my stitches will be more hidden. That's less of an issue up here by the brim, but the closer we get around and down, the more of an issue that's going to be. And so we're just going to slowly work our way around, grabbing a bit of the gnome, a bit of the carrot. I'm going to call this both a gnome and a snowman interchangeably, very probably. If you are making a toy, make these very close together. If you're making a decoration, you can space your stitches out more. You just need to get it on and stable. You're not looking to um, sort of hold it, uh, even if someone picks it up and swings it around by the nose, like toy makers are going to be thinking about. If you ha are making a decoration, you're pretty much done at this point. Just bury the end. Uh, knot it if you want to, but you can also just bury it. Um, but those of us who are doing toys, I want you to stick your needle through the carrot and come back up over here, down and on the other side. And what we're going to do now is we're going to whip stitch this part of the carrot to the body here. And that's going to provide us with another point of stability so that when the carrot is grabbed, it's not going to be weak in this direction. So you want to do two or three minimum uh, little stitches here as we are attaching. And then your nose will be so much more likely to stay on through more than just one day of play. Hopefully forever. All right, let's see how we're doing here. We're doing pretty good. My stitch there is quite visible. Um, I will have to see 
how high up my scarf goes and if that bothers me I might come in and just sort of use some white yarn and kind of go over it or I might take this whole thing out and re -knit it or reattach it but uh, as this is the probably fourth take of this video I'm not going to be doing that unless I really really dislike it um, it's been a heck of a tutorial season. All right, so to tie a knot, I'm just gonna go through a little bit of the, the, the nose here, and I'm going to go and make a loop. Then I'm going to go through that loop twice, and then pull that nice and tight. And as I pull tight with this hand, I'm gonna be nudging it closer and closer with these, with my thumbnail against my finger, so that I can get that knot as tight to the carrot as possible, as well as as close to it as possible. And then um, you can either just stick it through and cut it sort of close to the carrot, but then cut it on the other side, or you can thread it back up and through the carrot to be a little bit more stuffing of the carrot nose. Either way, once you've got your, your yarn sort of threaded through, rather than weaving in the ends, we kind of bury them inside the knitting. You're going to pull it tight and snip nice and close. And by pulling it tight, when the rest of the fabric kind of goes back to its regular um, tension, the end will disappear inside. All right, let's do the arms. The arms are not going to go at the midpoints. Well, that doesn't really show up when we're looking. So we're gonna go ahead of mid so that from the front, they're nice and visible. There is sort of a right side, wrong side to these. If you are looking at the hand part, if the knitting goes all the way up and onto the middle one, that's sort of the right side. And then this side here, where it gets kind of all jumpy and, and, and interesting, that would be the wrong side, but only by one definition. If you like the other side up, you do the other side up. It is always you who's the boss of your finished toy. All right, so if I put that ahead of center there and ahead of center here, that is roughly even. And I like the way they're spaced in terms of how they're interacting with our motifs. Like right here, it's on the other side of this little um, asterisk snowflake. And here it's framing the whole set. So that's gonna look really good. Put the tip of the arm in the narrowest part of the neck here. And uh, don't worry about having to be absolutely tidy because the top of, or I guess the bottom of the scarf is gonna be covering the top of the arm once we slide that over. So we're gonna attach a few times in this direction and a few times in that direction. Those of you who's do who've done gnome arms, you know what you need to know. Don't worry about uh, this being any different. So the yarn is coming from the, uh, arm, I'm going to go through the arm right at the top. I'm going to grab about a stitch and I'm going to go through and I'm going to do that at least two times to the left. If it's a toy, I'm probably going four times to the left because the odds that this snowman will be picked up and hurled around um, and then across the room by just one arm is going to be really high. And so we're going to do multiple times in this direction. Then we're gonna do multiple times in the other direction. So I always like to attach my arms in a V shape so that we have sort of stability going this way and also this way. So we're, we're creating balance even for decorations. I think it makes, it makes the arm hang a little more nicely and is less likely to kind of go off wildly to the distance doing something a little odd uh, in how it lays on the body. So a couple times this way, a couple times this way. If you're doing a decoration, you're done. If you're doing a toy, go through the I-cord or underneath and through the body, your choice. Come up in the armpit. And what you wanna do is you wanna grab a little bit of the body and then a little bit of the I-cord, just like we did for the carrot. And we're gonna provide another point of security for when the gnome is slash snowman is carried by that. So grab a little bit of the body, grab a little bit of the I-cord, and do that several times. Then tie a knot and let it disappear. So we are going to go through. We've got a loop. I'm gonna go through that loop twice. Pull 
pulling tight and snugging that knot down as tightly and as closely to the I cord as possible. Now we've already put a lot of ends down this twig arm to make it stiff and have a lot of body. Uh, so I don't think I'm going to be going back up with my I cord. I'm just going to go into the gnome. If you would like to have posable twig arms, you can insert wire down the center of it. I would use maybe florist's wire or something like that. And in that case, maybe don't um, put as many ends down the center. Um, you can knit I-cord around wire as well. Um, pipe cleaner, I think, will be too thin or, or too thick for this I-cord because it's not a very big I-cord uh, compared to the, the, the fluff of a pipe cleaner. But that is, um, I'll do the other arm and then we'll talk about the scarf. All right, so the last thing is just to put on the scarf. Um, it is one of those things that is entirely up to you how you want to do it. I'm just going to talk about kind of how I designed it and what I was thinking about. So I was designing it this way for minimum bulk, which is why we did two pieces and sewed them together. I was thinking about covering up the twig arms and I was thinking about giving it like this really cute um, sort of like a beard-like effect so that we have um, the nose up under the brim the scarf also right up under the nose and just kind of giving it this, this cute, cuddly, um, warm, wintry look. And I hope that you've enjoyed this so far. Those of you who are knitting it during the mystery part of uh, the pattern's life, I hope that you're enjoying yourself so far and I hope you enjoy what I have in store for you yet to come.